Good morning. Welcome to Daylight with Dean number 49. We've hit the seven week uh, milestone and uh, you're still here. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here this morning. It is May 30th, 2020 and uh, it's great uh, to be up and here and with you. Sunrise in New Kensington this Saturday morning is 5.51 a.m. And when my alarm went off at 5.20, uh, I was so excited. Um, I was able to sleep the entire night. Uh, went to bed about 10.45 and went to my bed, not my recliner. Uh, and slept with uh, hardly any discomfort whatsoever. Uh, to my uh, surgery site and just very, very grateful for that. So I am on the mend and uh, very happy about that. Um, I hope that your Friday went well and that you have a great Saturday and Sunday planned. Um, last evening, Leslie, uh, she wanted to watch a movie and uh, it wasn't on the Hallmark Channel, so I was excited about that. She went through all the free movie options we have on our uh, Xfinity plan, and I was excited about that. All the free on-demand movies. <laughs> and so free is always good. Um, and so she landed on two different... She, she found three different movies to choose... Two different movies to choose from. Um... One was called Follow Your Feet, um, and it was a, it, it was a lighthearted, uh, not lighthearted, lighthearted, but it was, you know, not drama, not suspense, not, you know, all sorts of things. And then another one she uh, looked at, I don't remember the name of it, but it was a uh, uh, film, I believe, made in Israel, and it was all spoken in Hebrew, I guess. There was no uh, uh, English spoken. It all had subtitles, and it looked like a great premise. looked like a funny film, but I was drifting in and out of uh, consciousness on my recliner. I'm like, if you want me to stick with you, I am not going to be able to read all those subtitles. And then... Um, we got distracted on the TV, came back, and she found uh, one um, that, about a lady that was called Red June, I think, or Red something. She was a uh, college student, and she got in a relationship. It was back in the late 30s, I think over in England. Uh, Judy Dench was the actress. She got in a relationship in college with a young man who was... Russian and uh, part of the Communist Party and she at the beginning of the movie she's now in her 70s late 70s and she's being accused of being part of this spy ring and it looked fascinating it just was wow just I love spy stuff and and action, not action, but drama and spy, like had all the components that I, I, Judy Dench, I mean, good grief. Like I could, I could watch Judy in just about anything, just like Morgan Freeman, you know, you can just, whatever role he's in, you can't take your eyes off him. Uh, Judy Dench is that way as well. And so I was so excited and Leslie said, well, we can, we can watch this. And we got about 10 minutes into it and I could tell it just is not what she's looking for and so I said Leslie I said if you're not enjoying this we don't have to watch this movie and she's like oh thank you and we turned it off and and she she said um I I, I said it's interesting Let's see if I can remember this correctly I said it's interesting I like drama and suspense and she said and I like happy and light and I said well I like drama and suspense because when I watch it I realize my life's not that bad I don't you know I'm, my life's pretty good 
And she said, <laughs> she said, I don't like drama and suspense, and I like happy and enjoyable because my life is dramatic and suspenseful, and I need to have a break from that, and I need happy and light. So I was just amused at the juxtaposition of our two uh, reasons for liking the type of movies that we are. They both are like to help us kind of get in a different frame of mind or uh, get in a different place, but uh, for two totally different reasons. So I might have to visit with her a little bit today about the, uh, the drama and suspense in her life that uh, I may be bringing to her. So. Uh, poor girl, she had quite a week. They had taken care of me uh, from Monday morning on. Uh, her dad had a brief run to the emergency room to get some fluids. He was a little dehydrated. Uh, she took her mom with her on that. And she took her, the highlight of her week was yesterday, took uh, her oldest and youngest daughter to TJ Maxx in <laughs> Fox Chapel, because they're now open. It was the highlight of her her uh, day yesterday. But um, the movie we watched was called, um, it was called Follow Your Feet. And it was, when it was all over, I'm like, that was an excellent movie. Great choice. I'm so glad we watched that. And so if you're looking for uh, just a movie that will take you on an adventure, uh, my wife loves Italy. She loves to go to Italy. She, um, it's her favorite place in the world. Uh, Phil's quote, and uh, somebody feed Phil, uh, is when he says, the problem with the rest of the world is it isn't Italy. Um, that's my wife's mantra as well. And that's why she loves New Kensington so much is because it's like a little Italy in many ways. And so... Um, the movie that um, Follow Your Feet uh, winds up in Italy about uh, over halfway through and uh, packed a whole lot into uh, that two hour movie, but it moved, it had movement, it, was, it had great characters, it was funny, it had wit, uh, it made you think. Um, it, it was about how she had stopped living even while she was alive, there was a line in there that her sister said to her, because she had talked about how she was afraid of dying. And she said something like, why in the world would you be afraid of dying? You're so terrified of living that fear of dying shouldn't even be on your radar screen or something like that. So it was a, it, it was a really good movie. Um, Follow your feet. So that was, that was our evening, the last evening. Uh, my youngest daughter's boyfriend came down uh, from uh, Armstrong County and brought her flowers. You see those over my shoulder. Um, yes, uh, those are great flowers. Um, so um, thank you very much for that. Fine, fine young man that she's dating. Uh, he's a senior at Armstrong and uh, just a great kid. He has not gotten a haircut in the past 10 weeks and it's driving Emma Ruby crazy, but uh, it was great to have him here last evening. Uh, so yesterday, uh, just to wrap up, yesterday I did a funeral. I mentioned to you that I was doing a funeral at 11 o'clock and it was from a, um, a family that was at a wedding that I did on leap day. February 29th, uh, Saturday, this past February. And the uh, person who had passed loved the job I did with the um, wedding so much. He told his wife, I love how to minister. He's so funny. Love how he brought wit and humor into that. I, I, I want to go to his church. It's It was great. And and uh, then all this hit and uh, never got to meet him. Um, but I was doing my uh, talk, uh, celebrating his life and um, just at the end, encouraging everybody there to be ready. Uh, 
This gentleman died um, Memorial Day afternoon. Uh, had a big celebration on Sunday with family and friends, and uh, got up, had uh, had a lunch, when laid down on his couch, was snoring, and then it got real quiet and just died peacefully at home with a heart attack uh, at like two or two in the afternoon, and uh, it was a very unique. Time together. Uh, the funeral home did a great job getting 24 people in there, all spaced out, all wearing masks, in a good sized room. And um, when I asked, I asked the widow if it would be okay to invite people to share what they loved about her husband, and she said yes. And there were like six kids there. They all shared and. Uh, when they shared, they would cry and the others would gather around them and you could tell there was a lot of love in the room. Um, there were also um, just a lot of other family members. And so one of the things I said was, you know, whatever is keeping you from being ready for when your time comes, you want to give attention to that kind of similar message I've been saying here. And so I said, um, if there's someone you need to forgive, I would encourage you to move toward that and to forgive them. And I said, perhaps there's someone that you need to ask for forgiveness from. And I encouraged them to do that. I said, whatever it is that you find, if you have a gap between you and God, between you and the Lord, why, why don't you deal with that? Why don't you give some attention to that? And then when I was done shortly after that, the oldest daughter raised her hand and said, can I share something? And I'm like, yeah. We had the sharing time had already wrapped up, but she wanted to share something. And she said, she said, what that minister just said is absolutely correct. And I want to say it so loud. She said, I have a lot of unforgiveness toward my father. And... I, it's too late for me. And I wish that I could have that conversation with him and process through all that I need to navigate with him to be able to forgive him. And it's too late for me. She said, so I cannot say strongly enough that there is someone that you need to, and she started preaching that. She goes, there is someone you need to forgive. Do it. Reach out to them. Forgive them before it's too late, like it's too late for me. And um, like, wow, there's a lot of energy behind that. And uh, so I finished with a scripture and then we had a closing song, we had great music playing. Oh my, they wanted three songs uh, played. The opening song I didn't recognize, but uh, about halfway through, a little before halfway through, I talked about how the Lord gives us strength and comfort and hope, not through th just through scripture, but through song and through music. We played a second song, and I didn't know what it was going to be. And it was Leonard Cohen's version of Hallelujah. And I watched a documentary on Leonard Cohen and found it fascinating. And a couple months ago, I went to bed with his most popular songs on my playlist, the top five. And his music was riveting. Had that and then um, closed with the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Not the one from The Wizard of Oz, but the more upbeat, modern one. And uh, there went a dry eye in the place. So afterwards, when I was getting ready to leave, I went and found the oldest daughter and spoke to her. And she goes, my mom must have told you all about our family for you to know that you needed to talk about that. And I said, no, I didn't know, know any of the dynamics. Um, I could tell, you know, when I was talking that there were a lot of personalities there and that there was going to be a lot these kids had to navigate through. But I didn't know any of what she spoke of. And she said, well, that's just amazing. I can't believe I wasn't going to say anything. And when you started talking about forgiveness and I knew I had to say that. It's funny how the Lord does that. Yeah. 
I don't uh, take a lot of joy in ending on, on a somber note, but um, it was a big part of my day yesterday and wanted to share that with you. And so I hope that you find great movies to watch for free during your downtime. And I hope that you find the ability to forgive or give attention to whatever needs attention in your relational world before your time comes. Let me pray. Father, thank you so much for the gift of this new day. We thank you for daylight and how whenever we uh, experience daylight in the morning, we're reminded that it's a new day, a new chance at a new day, a new walk at a new life with you. Lord, I pray for each person here t today. I just ask God that you would remind them of your love for them, of the joy and pleasure that you take in watching them live their lives. And I pray, Lord, that if there's anything distancing them and you, that they would give attention to that. And as they move toward you, that you would move toward them and close that gap very quickly pray that you would give each person watching this morning courage, grace, and love. And we cannot wait for this great day that you have in store for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a great day. See you tomorrow on our 50th edition of